The Grazia Gallery in the Sun is a 10-acre national historic landmark nestled in the foothills of the beautiful Santa Catalina Mountains in Tucson, Arizona. It opened in 1965, and it is home to over 15,000 originals of Ted de Grazia's art pieces, including oil paintings, watercolors, ceramics, sculptures, and there's all kinds of things, even a burrito, or should I say a taco in there that's painted. Uh, there are six permanent collections on display, and uh, many of them rotate throughout the year. Uh, all kinds of new exhibits, so it's always good to watch the website to see what's coming up. You can go to degrazia.org. And excited to have Lance Labor, we call him the Tucson Dude, back on Big Blend Radio today. He's the executive director of the Degrazia Gallery in the Sun. And today we're going to find out what's happening in regards to current exhibits, but also talk about one of the permanent collections you can go and see at the gallery. It is the Padre Kino collection. Welcome back, Tucson Dude. How are you? I'm good. Here, uh, Thanks for having me, Lisa. Hey. So this is exciting to talk about the permanent collections. We're always talking about the rotating new exhibits, and um, but it's always good to take a look at something that is always there for people to see. Um, but, I mean, when you think about it, 15,000 originals, how did you even come up with, all right, we're going to have these are the six permanent collections for people to view. That's a lot uh, of paintings. <laughs> yeah, it is. But uh, actually, that uh, the the permanent collections uh, were De Grazia's uh, doing. He uh, he put up the uh, the permanent collections uh, himself, and uh, we've just uh, left them up. Uh, hmm. You know, for throughout the years. So, so that was his doing. Him. So Padre Kino is something I know is, is an important thing because, and this is the thing, de Grazia was known for painting the Southwest, the people, the culture, the landscape, and um, I even have um, a book that I know I got out of your gift shop at the gallery. It's Padre Kino, Memorable Events in the Life and Times of the Immortal Priest Colonizer of the Southwest, depicted in drawings by de Grazia, and I know some of his he wrote about Padre Kino, and uh, some of his writings and artwork were in Arizona Highways magazine, uh, and that was a really popular thing that he, you know, covered Padre Kino, and it seems like he's always had a fascination for Father Kino. Um, that's true. Uh, I think uh, that um, De Grazia had a had a kinship. Uh, with Father Kino, Father Kino really loved uh, the Tohono O'odham Indians. He he loved the Indians in the area, and uh, De Grazia felt the same way. So there, the, uh, you know, he felt this kinship with this man who lived, uh, you know, so many hundreds of years ago, and uh, I think that's what what started it uh, with De Grazia. Uh, not to mention Saint of Your Mission, uh, which. Uh, Everybody loves in Tucson, and everybody loves everywhere. Uh, but uh, you know, it's, mm-hmm. that's on the uh, the, the Tohono O'odham Reservation, and uh, you know, it was one of De, De Grazia's favorite uh, subjects to paint. It's beautiful. It's known as the White Dove of the Desert, and it's really impressive. And in fact, it's it's you know one of the most impressive missions in the country. I know people come out there to look at the architecture as well and um but it is just so i mean it's it is like the white dove of the desert it's it's so proud and and beautiful in the middle of the desert there's this huge mission because it's it's big it's big and it's but it it is it is beautiful and it's very old um you know it's been there for a really long time and um uh, you know, and it's a living church. Uh, it's uh, every Sunday morning. There's, uh, you know, there's mass every Sunday morning. And Father Kino, somebody, some call him Padre Nuestro, uh, and call him the Renaissance man. Just like uh, you, when you look at Ted de Grazia, we always talk about him being a Renaissance man. So right. I think that that's that connection. Of, uh, but he pretty much came in on peace. It was in 1687 that he came into northern Mexico, and uh, that at that point that was Arizona. And coming through this area, and he went through Arizona and California, but he was friends with the Native Americans just like Ted de Grazia was. So do you think like Ted de Grazia like really kind of not emulated him, but um, looked up to him and thought he was doing the right thing because of the way he communicated with the Native Americans, where so many others weren't doing it that peacefully? You know, when when the um, uh, the Spaniards, so the Spaniards, especially the Spanish priests, when they when they came to the New World. It it was not a very nice thing, you know. They they uh, spread Christianity uh, at the mu- you know with the muzzle of a gun, and Father Kino didn't do that. Father Kino uh, came and and the 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 uh, Indians loved him. 
uh, he brought them cattle, he brought them cotton, he he brought them certain uh, uh, you know uh, crops uh, that they didn't have, and he just loved them, and they loved him back, and that was really rare for those times, mm-hmm. um, you know, to, to to get someone who uh, who who wasn't doing doing something for his mm-hmm. own. Uh, you know, betterment. He he was trying to give, and that's what he did. And that's I think that's why DeGrazia loved loved Kino so much. Uh, DeGrazia felt the same way, and um, he had many many friends on the reservation, and uh, he loved them very much. And and uh, uh, I think that was the whole connection between uh, DeGrazia and Father Kino. And I know that also when you know Father Kino when he was going across, he was part instrumental of working with the Native Americans to build the missions, right? So he was, um, they, I mean, even if you look at the White Dove of the Desert, San Javier del Bac, am I saying it correctly yet? San yeah, San, yeah, San Javier del okay. Bac. San Javier, okay, I'll get there. Um, I know he's instrumental for Tumacacri, which is now uh, part of the National Park Service, uh, just south of Tubac, Tumacacri National Historical Park. There is also Guavavi Ranch uh, that has uh, one of the first missions that he built over here. And then he was also known for uh, documenting Casa Grande, uh, the actual, those giant, the Casa Grande ruins, also part of the Park Service, uh, that he documented this. So when Juan Batista de Anza and Father Font were on their expedition going up to what is now San Francisco, on that expedition with all those 200 people, they were using his documents uh, to Look at you. where to go. Yeah, yeah, That's man. Very I know good. My, I know my, my stuff on, on the Juan Batista trail, and this was but Father Kino's notes is what they Father Font read from, and that's right. Well, he he made a lot of maps. Uh, Father yeah. Kino made maps, and uh, yeah, you're it's right about all that. Yeah, it's interesting. And then De Grazi goes and paints them. All. In fact, I, I know we've talked about this before in shows at Casa Grande Ruins National Historical um, Monument. Nancy, Nancy and I have actually seen paintings, De Grazia paintings in there in the visitor center. So it's all connected. You know? Right, <laughs> it's, right. It's all got to do with Father Kino. So now you can go and see the series, and this is one thing uh, Ted DeGrazia is known as for painting in series. And uh, this is one of the first that you see um, in the gallery. And and as it true, he did paint on a taco, right? Was it a taco or a burrito? Uh, it was on a uh, a tortilla. Tortilla, there it is. He, yeah, he he painted a uh, uh, it was a it was a Merry Christmas card. Uh, he painted a horse uh, on a tortilla. Okay, that's all. It's always in that same area. Uh, yeah, but now, well, how many? Taco. How, hey, why not? <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe he was trying to feed Padre Kino. Uh, but his paintings of of that series are in there, and I know he's got some beautiful ones of San David del Bach, But it's also with ceremonies too. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, one of the interesting things uh, about this uh, Father Kino collection is that you know, obviously, uh, being around in the 1500s. Uh, Father Kino, there was no pictures of Father Kino, you know, no photographs, so we really didn't know what he looked like. Uh, and wherever in, in uh, De Grazia's collection that he did, wherever Father Kino's face uh, is, is depicted, uh, De Grazia painted a uh, self-portrait. So all of Father Kino's faces are De Grazia. Wow. That's it's interesting. funny. It's it's kind of that funny. That is yeah. the that's they wanted to have a conversation. And even when you read his story about this, wandering through the, in in this book, he, he's wandering through the desert, Ted de Grazia, and he's all into the shadows from the cactus, you know, at the end of day, and horse hooves, and all of a sudden, you know, he gets to this little house, and this old lady opens the door, and she's like, Padre Kino told me you'd be here, to, and I've been waiting for 250 years for you. <laughs> And it's like these stories, and that's the this that's something that I find really magical about his art. That I always feel like there's this whole like he would be making movies now, like if he he was here today, I think he would be making fantasy films and things. Well, you know, he made movies when he was alive, so uh, he made uh, probably around uh, ten or fifteen films. Wow! Uh, So I thought you knew that, but I guess you didn't. No, no, I just know about Casa Grand Ruins. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, De Grazi did a lot of films, and uh, some of them are uh, actually really funny, and uh, some of them are very interesting. You know, he did some uh, 
like the, uh, he did uh, some documentary type films where he he shows how he he did um, uh, stone lithographs. Uh, you know how how he how he uh, actually did some of his art, and then some of them he did were stories where uh, you know he'd be riding on a horse and he would be playing a character and someone would shoot him off the horse and he'd have ketchup for blood and he'd fall oh, off the cool. horse and yeah, there's a lot of them. So he Very could go hang out films. with he could go hang out with Willie Nelson. He probably he could. could. He could do stagecoach with, you know, Willie Nelson and, and Johnny Cash. Like that could be a whole thing. I know, I knew he was friends with a lot of filmmakers. I just didn't know he was that into that. You know, that's that's cool. So when when people come to the gallery, um, again, it's just one of these. It's a Tucson treasure, as I always say. And and definitely, if you come to Tucson, this is something that it is just a incredibly unique experience it'll it's just it's not a typical gallery at all because it's all adobe and there's cactus floors there's i mean it's crazy cool just for the architecture and um just all it's, it's, it is one of the most uh unique and individual galleries uh buildings you'll ever see ever anywhere sure. uh, it yeah. is it is very unique and people got to go enjoy that because it's it's definitely different, and, and it's an icon when you come here. You have to. Um, but the room with Padre Kino, uh, that series, how many paintings do people get to see? I'm just giving uh, I'm, I'm just estimating. There's around 25. I think there's mm. 25 in that collection. Mm. And, and so there's all the different missions, and then there's, you know, yeah, you can have a look at, you know, Ted DeGrazia's face. <laughs> yeah, place. well, I mean, it it, it, it kind of – it goes in a uh, there's an order to it where you know uh, uh, there's uh, it starts in the beginning where where Father Kino comes riding in and and it, it uh, shows Father Kino um, doing you know doing different things and 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 a little bit of construction and then in, in the very end uh, you know it has uh, Father Kino after he dies in his in his casket and um, so there's uh, it's a whole it's a whole story. And, and Ted DeGrazia also went to all the missions uh, that Kino was involved in and uh, really to study the life of, of uh, Padre Kino. But also he dedicated the mission that's on the property at, at the gallery, the mission in the sun, and he dedicated that to him, right? Correct. Correct. It was in, it was in honor of Our Lady of Guadalupe and dedicated to uh, Father Kino. Okay, and then I know the Way of the Cross is an exhibit that you um, put up every year, and um, I know this one that you have right now runs until May fifteenth, and it's unique. It's got watercolors and oils, and we'll talk about that real quick. Uh, but do you think the Way of the Cross is kind of you know it's inspired from Father Kino because Father Kino was known you know while everybody else were you know the soldiers had guns and swords, and here they come. Uh, yet he was this gentle priest known for just carrying a cross everywhere and, yeah. you know, being really polite and nice to the different cultures, the local cultures. So do you think that that's kind of inspired the way of the cross? Um, no, I, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think that it was um, the story of Jesus and the, and the crucifixion uh, was what uh, got that going. What happened was a, um, uh, there's a at the University of Arizona, uh, the Catholic Center is called the Newman Center, and uh, a priest uh, called De Grazia uh, and asked him if he would paint uh, the way of the cross. And first, De Grazia said, "No, um, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy to do this, and I and I'm not going to do it." And um, well, I think the priest, you know, kind of said, well, you know, you are, you are worthy of doing this. And so de Grazia thought about it for a while, and I guess he changed his mind. And what he did was he painted uh, 15 um, watercolors uh, as studies, and they are just beautiful. Now, normally we don't put these out. We put the oils out every year at Lent uh, and Easter time. Uh, but this year we thought uh, uh, everybody would enjoy the watercolors. And uh, so in one room we have uh, the studies, and in the next room we have the oils, and they're all gorgeous. The, the watercolors are just incredible. Uh, hmm. Very, very beautiful. 
Uh, he and did an amazing job, and it's one of the one of the few collections that he did not sign. Uh, wow. For whatever reason, he did not sign these. I don't know why, but uh, he should have. Uh, hmm. But anyway, you know, everybody knows he did them anyway. Yeah, and it, it's interesting though, huh? I wonder oh, maybe yeah. he got interrupted, or you know, I don't know. When had some shivers regal? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, maybe you know, Who maybe knows? he had a couple of drinks and fell asleep and forgot. I know. And the other one that everyone can see now, too, is also really unique. It's um, the hot wax encaustic paintings. This is on display until September 5th, 2018. And that's something you don't see every day in any artist uh, studio. Yeah. Right? Now, the encaustic paintings, uh, those are very interesting. Those are quite, ex uh, I think, DeGrazia, uh, that was one of his experimental, uh, uh, you know, times that he was, uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. making new, making new art. And uh, these are done with beeswax. They're painted with beeswax. Wow. And uh, they're, they're very, very nice, uh, very mm -hmm. different. And um, this is the first time uh, that we've had these up. That's so great. this is something new that probably most people I've never seen before. Cool. And the other thing I know, um, you had the fun and games uh, collection out um, a few months back, and that was something very popular, showing the different, you know, the different Native American cultures and just people playing in, in all kinds of ways and kids. Oh playing. yeah. And, and he's known for painting little children, and um, I know that this um, exhibit is actually going to go to Benson, which is just down the road from Tucson. It's um, it's on your way to Tombstone and all those great places in Cochise County. But you're taking yeah, we're gonna... that to the Historic Society Museum or the His Benson Historic Museum. Yeah, we're gonna uh, we're gonna loan that to them for a couple of months, so everybody in Benson and in the area can uh, enjoy a little DeGrazia. Oh, right on, right on. Now, you know, before you go, we want to play a song. We're gonna play Sunset Steps uh, from the album Please Remember Me, and uh, this is a, a beautiful album. Uh, it is it's featuring Ted DeGrazia's music and also his son Domingo DeGrazia playing on there too. In fact, that's what you're going to hear with Sunset Steps. But uh, Lance, before you go, can you tell everybody a little bit about the album because you you actually found the manuscripts and have, have yeah, the um, uh, several years ago uh, I was going through uh, archives looking for something I don't remember what, and I came across some handwritten um, music, and it was actually written in pencil. And uh, I pulled them out, and uh, they were uh, uh, original De Grazia, um, original De Grazia music that we took. Uh, we got the uh, Tucson uh, Jazz Academy uh, to arrange it. They played it. Domingo uh, also played on parts of it. And uh, we, we made this disc, and it came out wonderful. So uh, De Grazia was not only a... a a fine artist uh, and a painter. He was also a musician and a builder and a and builder an architect. And, yeah, an architect. And, a, and a muralist <laughs> and a muralist. There was nothing this guy wasn't. And a filmmaker. I love and that. A filmmaker. I love that. Correct. We're going to have to do that at some point. We're going to have to just cover his movies. I want, I want to see them. That's awesome. Uh, everybody, again, uh, go to the website, degrazia.org, and uh, you'll be able to learn more about coming out there. It's just one of those places you want to spend a few hours. They have beautiful gardens, and the spring is beautiful with the Cactus Corral in the center courtyard with all these different, you know, definitely everything is green and lush, and there's a beautiful fountain. Uh, so it's really a nice place to go. And if you want to have a picnic lunch, you can too out there. So there's nice picnic benches. And so check that out. Again, degrazia.org. And of course, don't forget, Big Blend Radio airs daily. For the full schedule, go to bigblendradio.com. Now here it is, Sunset Steps. Thanks so much, Lance. Thanks, Lisa. Bye-bye.